אני שלי, גול אני שלי. Hi, how are you? Why is it Golani Shalach, shalach if it, it, you're not a, you, you didn't my serve him? My son, my son, and he did? Oh, yes, he did? yes, yeah. yes. No, I'm not her son, but uh, I served no. with her son. Yeah, and my daughter also, she was in um, engineering combat also. Oh, let's see, what do you got? Also, and uh, I got that, this, this is really important. I need also to show her, uh, the mother. This is the sticker of uh, Daniel Pomeranz that got killed in uh, Tsukaitan in Gaza. He was uh, serving in Golani with my son in um, Gdud uh, Shloshese. He was in Gdud Shloshese. And uh, his last uh, wish that uh, everybody will remember him, that he is happy. Okay, that he chose, to be, he chose to be in Golani. He got killed, unfortunately, but uh, he wants everybody to remember him happy. So that's the sticker. And, uh, you know, I have it in my car. You know, um, a lot of people in Israel have it in the, his, their car. And I'm going to give this to people. Hey, this is another <laughs> soldier of Golani. Okay, yes, yes. What's special about the Golani Brigade, just so people can understand? So the Golani Brigade was actually the first uh, brigade of the IDF. That's why it's called Unit Number One. Um, it's the unit of the people, Infantry. you know. It's Infantry. the yeah. It's uh, we're there for to protect the people of Israel. Okay. And do our best. Yeah. And thank God they're all back home. Our kids, okay, and my daughter also. She was in engineering in combat. She just finished the army. Uh, she Your daughter was in combat. In uh, engineering combat. Oh, for, oh she was yes. in engineering. They all were born here in Los Angeles, and they went to Israel to volunteer. Okay. What was your role in the establishment of this group? Well, I had a son who was a lone soldier. Uh, served uh, 2009 to 2011. He serves in Gavati as a lone soldier. Recognizing that there are lone soldiers and they're actually lone parents. You know, they call it a Chayel Boded, and I think we're Horim Bodedim. We're, our children are gone. We're alone. We're without them. And I felt that there needed to be a connection between. For three years, right? Or for lone soldiers, two years? Three years. Lone soldier can be, uh, depends how you go in. You can be 18 months, 16 months, or three full years, or more for that matter. And uh, I felt. There was an important missing link between the families, the parents, and the, the government of Israel, the, the IDF. You know, here we are in all around the world, but as a state in California, in the United States, our children are there, girls, boys, and uh, we had no connection, no separate connection with the, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Council Generals, other than what we may know ourselves. And I wasn't looking for a connection. I had a great connection. I'm very active in our community. But I felt there are a lot of parents who weren't very active. Some parents who've never been to Israel. You see our, bo our booth here. We started uh, the organization to support families of lone soldiers. And this is what our Miluim. We take care of uh, my two kids used to serve, volunteered in the IDF. And so are many parents right here that their kids are volunteering. And we do our miluim here. Shouldn't your kids who live in America, shouldn't they serve in the American army? They consider themselves, it's a very good question, but they consider themselves that they have two homes, America and Israel. And they would serve wherever is the more immediate needs to protect the state of Israel and the Jewish people. And unfortunately, it is more urgent, you know, to protect the state of Israel from over there. July 19, 2010, I wrote to the Council General at the time, Yaki Dian, and said, I didn't want the very first time that I officially hear from the state of Israel that, God forbid, my son was killed, captured, or injured. I said, we are your best ambassadors. We can do so much. And we can work together and do the things that our children need and what the state of Israel can be helped by us. And it went on deaf ears for a while until we started to work and go more and more. I was able to bring in, when I went to a, a, a dinner of a Garin Sabar, when they were sending off 23 young boys and girls to, for, to become a soldier. And I met Eli Fitlovitz and he wanted to join what we're doing. And we started an action to really create this organization so that they're there for parents. And let's go back 2014. 
July 20th, Sunday morning, what happens to the Steinberg family? They get a knock on the door from the representative of the Israeli military, and they said, hello? Yes. Yes? We're from the military. Something wrong with my son? Is he dead? That was the first they ever heard of the state of Israel talking to them, that their son was killed. This is not the way we as Jews should treat people. They, they never were in Israel themselves. They never understood what a graduation was. They never understood the things that are important. We met with them and brought them into the organization and really tried to bring them close. We, I felt that there's a way to help in the medical needs, to bring people to Israel. The organization has been fortunate enough to, to receive a grant from the Jewish Community Foundation to establish a program in Los Angeles. And we have sent parents to Israel who couldn't afford it. We've actually sent grandparents to the funeral of their grandchild who was killed in a training accident from the East Coast because the Israeli government pays for the parents, they don't pay for the grandparents, and they couldn't afford to go. What grandparent doesn't want to go to a funeral of a child who's given their lives for the state of Israel? So we're there as lobbyists for the families. We're there to bring Israel closer to us. We feel it's an important connection that we need to make and help parents understand. Just this morning, for example, I'm a physician, I'm at the hospital, and one of the nurses comes up to me, her son is enlisting in August and has a problem of, of where he's gonna live. We're gonna help them, and I work with the Lone Soldier Center as well, to help them find places for their children, people who have never been to Israel themselves. So we think that there's an important missing link that we can help, and we are doing that, to bring these families closer to the state of Israel. My name is Stuart Steinberg. You're, are you Israeli? I am not. Born in America. Your wife, is she Israeli? No, she is not either. Your son Max, what happened to him? So Max in 2012 went on a birthright program to Glee Birthright and um, upon his uh, experience there he made the decision that he wanted to uh, enlist in the IDF and, and perhaps become a citizen of Israel and he knew that if that was going to happen, if he was ever going to become a citizen, uh, he would feel uh, horrible if he had not served. So he made the decision to return to Israel and to enlist and that was in December of 2012. He served in, in uh, what kind of a battle capacity? He was a Galani soldier, combat soldier, Galani 13. It was a really important commitment and responsibility for him to, uh, to succeed in becoming a Galani soldier. And uh, it was his mission. He had some challenges initially because he did not speak Hebrew at all. They didn't just dismiss him. They did send him home. And they gave him an opportunity to, uh, to return, learn more Hebrew which he did do successfully and uh, became a Galani soldier. Ultimately, did, did he get hit by a bullet or a bomb? Uh, the, uh, he was an APC that unfortunately got hit by a missile, and so he lost his life. Uh, what was the location? In Gaza. Um, you've paid your price, but yet you, your, your commitment to the Jewish people and the survival of the, of the Jewish nation uh, but you're in, involved in this organization now. How come? So uh, upon Max's death, we got a, uh, a visit from uh, Families of Lone Soldiers. They uh, shared with us what their mission was. They asked us a few questions about our, our connection to Israel, our connection to the consulate, our connection to, uh, you know, everything. And uh, as it turned out, we had none. Uh, my, my son made the decision to return to Israel. And, and, uh, and defend the, the Jewish state. Uh, as, as parents, uh, we were completely disconnected other than what he shared with us, and we knew when we learned about Families of Lone Soldiers that there were other parents like us that uh, really could use an organization that was paying attention to the families, and uh, we felt that we could make a, a major contribution in that regard. Yoo-hoo! Am Yisrael Chai! Thank God that we have a you know the soldier that were born here and thanks to those angels okay that taking care of that okay taking care of our lone soldiers there are in Israel and they were born here okay so thank you